Hello, my name is Wendy Chung, and I'm the Principal Investigator for Simon Searchlight. The goal of this talk is to share more about the Simon Searchlight community, how you can participate in this ongoing research program, and how your participation might affect your lives and the lives of future families and individuals. Simon Searchlight is an international research program to accelerate science and improve the lives of people with rare genetic neurodevelopmental disorders. People with genetic diagnoses, their families, and scientists play equal parts in this journey. Families like yours are the key to making meaningful progress. Your unique experience can hold the clues that scientists need to find answers for you and others with rare genetic disorders. The Simon Searchlight team is made up of scientists, doctors, data analysts, genetic counselors, research coordinators, product developers, and communication specialists. We are all here to make research participation as easy as possible. We work together to learn about your condition and the issues you face and help find answers to improve your clinical care and management. We all believe we can improve the care of individuals today by sharing our collective experience while we support scientists to develop additional treatments and supports for the future. As I said, we are a research program and our goal is to speed up science to improve the care for those with rare conditions. At the end of the day, we want to shed light on all of these conditions by collecting high quality natural history data and building strong connections between researchers, families, and industry partners. There are a few elements to this that I want to highlight. First, we collect detailed medical and behavioral histories as well as blood samples for the biorepository, all of which we share with researchers. Second, we strive to not only collect data, but also provide information back to participants. We summarize the information you provide and share results back with you in multiple ways. And we are always looking for new opportunities to provide valuable information back to your community. One of our core principles is to eliminate data silos and ensure that information is shared widely with researchers around the world. All of your information is de-identified to protect your privacy. We believe that broad access to this de-identified information will speed up the pace of research so we can freely share the data and biospecimens with qualified researchers. And we have an entire portal devoted to sharing resources with the research community. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Simon's Searchlight is part of a larger set of programs housed under the Simon's Foundation, which is a private foundation that enhances research in several different fields, including research in math and the basic sciences. The Simons Foundation provides research funding for autism and neurodevelopmental disorders through the Simons Foundation Autism Research Initiative, also known as SAFARI. SAFARI's mission is to improve the understanding, diagnosis, and treatment of autism spectrum disorders by funding innovative research of the highest quality and relevance. Simon Searchlight is a program funded by SAFARI. We have two sister studies, SPARC and Autism BrainNet. SPARC recruits and engages a community of people with autism and their families who live in the United States to participate in research studies. We collaborate with 31 university-affiliated autism centers across the country. Many people who receive a genetic diagnosis from SPARC will be invited to participate in Simon Searchlight to continue their research journey. Autism BrainNet is our biorepository of postmortem brain tissue, made possible through the collaborative network of academic sites that collect, store, and distribute brain tissue. Simon Searchlight and Autism BrainNet share data to make research easier. The next two slides expand a bit more on these two sister studies. I want to pause for a minute to talk more about Autism BrainNet. This is a safari program that promotes innovative, high-quality research on donated post-mortem brain tissue to better understand brain changes that are linked to autism and other neurodevelopmental conditions. This program works with researchers and patient advocate communities to promote greater knowledge of neurodevelopmental conditions and brain tissue research, 
while ensuring the smoothest donation process for families during such a difficult time. Autism BrainNet includes three sites, also called nodes in the United States, and two international partnerships in Canada and the United Kingdom. Each node follows the high standards set by Autism BrainNet to collect, process, store, and distribute the gift of donated brain tissue to qualified researchers worldwide. We invite you to learn more about Autism BrainNet and the donation process by calling 877-333-0999 or visiting the website at autismbrainnet, all one word, dot org, O-R-G. Identifying people with these rare conditions can be challenging and depends on access to clinical care and genetic testing. One way that we aim to help the Simon Searchlight communities grow is through the genetic testing we provide in our sister study called SPARC. If a SPARC participant is found to have one of the genetic conditions that we study in Searchlight, we let them know and we invite them to join Searchlight to continue their research journey and be connected with other families. Here is a list of the genetic variants we study. The Simon Searchlight gene list contains over 150 genetic conditions that are known to be associated with autism and other neurodevelopmental disorders. We expect this list to grow as we learn more. We know that these genetic disorders are rare, so we aim to make this research accessible to as many people as possible. Simon Searchlight is now available in multiple languages, English, Spanish, French, and Dutch. We are planning to add more languages in the future. Participants who may speak a language other than English may have a slightly different list of surveys to complete. This depends on what survey translations are available for the published measures. We prioritize surveys that are standardized, scientifically validated, and sensitive to detecting changes over time. By collecting this information over time or longitudinally, we all learn more about how the condition can change as people get older. Overall, we aim to collect information in a way that is feasible and scalable with a focus on generating knowledge that is useful in designing future clinical trials to assess new treatments and address the issues that are a high priority to participants and their doctors. This table shows what information we collect from people with genetic variants in Simon's searchlight and how many times the information is collected. One of the first things we ask for is a genetic lab report from the person who has the genetic condition, as well as any other family members who have had genetic testing done. This is to ensure that everyone ends up in the correct place and that researchers have the necessary data to analyze from these reports. We then ask questions about medical and developmental history and medication use. Importantly, we will check in every year to update anything that has changed. We use several online surveys to collect essential natural history information to understand how the genetic condition might affect daily life. We have a detailed seizure history survey, sleep surveys, quality of life surveys, and a measure of development and everyday skills called the Vineland as well as other standardized surveys. Some surveys were ideas from participants that led to the development of new research questions. When a blood sample is needed, we work with Quest Diagnostics in the United States to do the collection. We send participants a blood drying kit that they can take to their local Quest Center. Currently, it is difficult to collect these samples in other countries, and we continue to look for possible solutions to this issue. This slide shows what measurements are on the horizon in Simon Searchlight. In response to feedback from families and patient advocacy groups and the results of our Voice of the Community project, we are implementing new measures. These are more sensitive, inclusive measures of all types of communications, such as the ORCA, and motor development, such as the PDCAT. These are used in clinical trials and natural history studies and can chart change over time. These may be more sensitive measures of severe behavior problems in people with neurodevelopmental disabilities. We will annually update developmental milestones and we are planning an expansive EEG record collection. Giving information back to participants is high on our priority list. We provide standardized reports for some of these surveys. The example on the upper right is for the Vineland survey, which provides information on daily functioning. 
The report explains a bit about what the results mean and where you or your child falls within those ranges. In addition to these individualized reports, we also do summary snapshot documents that look at an entire community and provide high-level information that is visually easy to understand. You can see an example of this type of summary in the middle of the screen. We currently provide these every three months for communities that have enough data submitted. We also do more detailed presentations at conferences and meetings. The more data that's submitted by participants, the more information we have to share back with you. Along with sharing back with participants, we want the information you provide to contribute to ongoing scientific knowledge. This includes genetic reference guides, such as ClinVar, and gene reviews, and articles in scientific journals and presentations at scientific conferences. Another way we help to support ongoing research into your genetic condition is by letting you know about new research opportunities outside of Simon Searchlight. We do this through a program called Research Match. Through Research Match, other scientists can ask to have specific surveys built into our system and sent to you. They are then sent the data that you provide, and this information is also added to the Simon Searchlight repository to further build on the information you have already submitted. We will also let you know about in-person studies, such as clinical trials, and you can choose to learn more at that time. Because we collect information in a standardized way across many different genetic conditions, it is easy for researchers to compare findings in related genes and see how they might be connected. So if something is learned in one condition, it will be possible to assess whether those same learnings apply to another related condition. Sometimes the connections between conditions are not immediately obvious. We have brought together a large number of neurodevelopmental conditions so that we can apply discoveries across as many possible conditions as we can. Simon Searchlight participants have the option to donate blood for research. This can happen remotely through Quest Labs in the United States or at in-person family conferences where international participants can also donate. The donated blood is sent by mail to our biobank. This blood is used to make various types of research resources, such as cell lines, DNA, and induced pluripotential stem cells, or IPS cells. In the next two slides, I will talk about how IPS cells are made and why they are valuable. So what exactly is Simon Searchlight doing to create IPS cells? As mentioned, participants can donate blood that is shipped to and stored in our biobank. The creation of IPS cells happens at the New York Stem Cell Foundation and the resulting IPS cells are again stored in the Searchlight Biobank. It takes six to nine months to make IPS cells, and the IPS cells that are made are available to researchers worldwide. IPS cells can be requested through a portal called Safari Base. Once a researcher requests the samples, the request is reviewed by our staff and the samples are shipped to them. Safari has formed a collaboration with the Nancy Lurie Marks Family Foundation to finance the creation of the IPS cells. With this, we save researchers time and money and ensure that the IPS cells are a high quality resource. The IPS cells that we are making are made from Simon Searchlight participant blood donations, but they can also be made from other sources like skin cells. Within your blood, there are many different types of cells that we cannot see with our bare eyes. Certain blood cells are separated and treated in a special way that tells them to become IPS cells. This first step takes about six to nine months. That is the time it takes from receiving the blood to making the IPS cells. I wanna point out that making the IPS cells is not an experiment. We are making IPS cells to create a resource for researchers to do their specific experiments. By making these cells available, Safari saves researchers time and money so they can focus on the real experiments. But why are IPS cells so valuable? IPS cells are very special because researchers can force them to become specific cells that make up the different tissues of the body, such as the nerve cells that make up the brain, the cells that make up the liver, or the cells that make up the heart. Those types of cells are typically not easily accessible from a living human. IPS cells allow researchers to study these cell types from participants 
with certain genetic conditions. Researchers can use the cells they make from the iPS cells, such as nerve cells, to understand how and why the cells of people with neurodevelopmental conditions function differently from those without a condition. In addition, the cells can be used to find and test drug therapies. We are still going strong after 13 years, and we continue to grow under the Simon Searchlight team. I have had the honor to work in the rare disease space for over 20 years and have fostered many partnerships across the rare disease community. I am thrilled that rare diseases are getting increasing attention from scientists and biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies to develop new treatments. I incorporate what I learned from directing my many National Institutes of Health funded research programs and other international studies of rare diseases into Simon Searchlight. I look forward to seeing what we can do together through my new position as the Chief of the Department of Pediatrics at Boston Children's Hospital. With my move, I hope there will be many additional exciting opportunities for the Simon Searchlight community to take advantage of the exceptional clinical care and brilliant scientists at Boston Children's Hospital. As you can see, our study is multifaceted. Simon Searchlight is an international research program that invests in both patient organizations and the broad research community through our data registry, community advisory committee, and biobank. The information and data that you provide are shared back to you in easy to understand registry updates and reports, including quarterly reports and voice of the community reports. We want you to represent yourself. Help us amplify your voice in the research community. We de-identify all participants' information before sharing it with researchers and follow the highest standards of data security. You can learn more about us and register through our website, Simon's Searchlight, one word, dot org, and connect with our community through our social media channels listed on this slide. If you have any questions about our research and or the registration process, our coordinators are here to help you at coordinators at simonsearchlight.org. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day.